Hello crafty friends, welcome to this video. Today we're going to be playing with the colour indigo and making this card by doing some stamping and die cutting. To start the ball rolling I'm going to do some stamping on this piece of smooth white cardstock and this is going to be the panel on the front of my card. To line up my stamps I add a little jig, I cut a piece of cardstock so that it was about an inch and three quarters high and then I lined up my stitch stamps here and pushed them down until they touched the top of the jig and that way I knew that my stamps were going to be straight horizontal on my card panel. Next I treated my card panel with some cornflour because I'm going to do some heat embossing but before I did that I stamped my stitch pattern here with chipped sapphire distress oxide which is an indigo color indigo is a purpley blue color it's in between violet and blue in the spectrum and chipped sapphire i think fits that bill so i stamped my stitch pattern three times with chipped sapphire because i wanted to get really good coverage and then i stamped it using an embossing ink because i wanted to make it super sticky Distress oxides do have pigment in them, which means they take a bit longer to dry than, say, a dye-based ink. So you can heat emboss with them, you can put the powder straight on the distress oxides, but sometimes it can be a bit patchy, so I like to go over it with embossing ink as well, so that I can guarantee that my embossing powder has got something to stick to. Speaking of embossing powder, I dipped my card panel into clear embossing powder and then melted it with my heat gun, and this gave a lovely raised shiny indigo pattern. Next I cut some leafy branches from smooth white cardstock and these are going to sit on the front of my card as a little cluster. To add a blush of colour to my die cuts I used Stormy Sky on the one that was going to go at the back, that's a very pale indigo-ish colour so I thought that could go at the back and I did that on the tallest die cut so it will peek out. And then on the middle size die cut I used faded jeans and on the smallest die cut, the one that's going to go at the front, I used chip sapphire and I went in quite heavy with the chip sapphire because I didn't want it to get lost against the other die cuts. So I'm going to end up with three bluey die cuts, one on top of the other. As I'd pretty much made everything for the front of my card, I thought I'd stick my card together and I decided to pop the panel up on a bit of craft foam, foam tape, to give it a little bit of dimension to help it stand off the front of the card. This is going on a 5x7 card base and the front panel is about a quarter of an inch smaller all the way around. Before adhering my die cuts, I wanted to give them a little bit of dimension. The one that's going at the back is going to stay flat. The middle one, I used an embossing tool and pressed it down on the front so the leaves curled forwards. And on the little one, the one that's going to go at the very front, I used an embossing tool on the back of the leaves so they curl backwards. And when the die cut is on the front of the card, it will sort of stand proud a little bit. To adhere my die cuts to my card panel, I used some tacky glue. As I said, this one at the back is going to go flat on the card. So I popped that on with a bit of tacky glue, pressed it down with the deli paper. The middle one I also added tacky glue to, but I didn't squish it into the tacky glue. I just added it so there was a little bit of glue here and there, enough to hold it on the card, because uh, I didn't want to lose that curled embossing that I'd put on. When I pressed it down with the deli paper, I did it very gently. To add my small die cut, I cut some tiny little squares of foam tape and popped those in the recesses behind the curled leaves and then stuck that on the front of my card. So that one is a bit more raised up, has a bit more texture. I did add a tiny little bit of glue to the bottom of the stem of that front die cut just so that it wasn't left flapping around. For my sentiment, I did exactly the same thing as I did with my stitch 
pattern. I stamped it three times with chip sapphire and then once with embossing ink and heat embossed it with clear embossing powder. Then I used a small stitched rectangle die to cut it out, pop some craft foam at either end and then layered that over my cluster of leafy things on the front of the card. I used my T-square ruler just to make sure it was horizontal. As a finishing touch I wanted to add some enamel dots and I made my own as I've been doing recently. I added some stormy sky, a pale indigo, onto a bit of smooth white cardstock, added some double sided sticky tape to the back and then used my circle cover plate die to cut out some circles and then dotted those little circles around and about my cluster. To make them look like enamel dots, I went over each one of them with some glossy accents, which will dry clear so they'll be their true colour and tie in well with the rest of the blues, the rest of the indigos on the card. And then I felt it just needed something a little bit more, so I brought in some white Nouveau drops and they just bring in a little extra gloss and dimension. And that's it, that's this card finished. Indigo day, done and dusted. Do join me tomorrow for Violet Day. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, do subscribe and ring that notification bell and I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching, bye for now.